So our topic today is we're going to continue on the discussion of adding and subtracting rational expressions. So this is going to be unit 1.9, day 2, and we're going to kind of get into kind of the core of how we would add and subtract these rational expressions. So with that, our objective is going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions and then making sure that we simplify them. So the biggest thing is we're not just adding and subtracting, as we found out the other day, rational expressions. Um, we're not just adding and subtracting fractions. What we always have to make sure that we're doing is that we're simplifying. So whenever we do anything, we always have to make sure that we're simplifying. And so we're going to have to use a few steps in order to do this. So just make sure that as we're going through this, not only are we're adding and subtracting the fractions like we would normally do, but we also need to make sure that we do this and we're kind of using the tools that we had before. So there's the factoring, there's, you know, the simplification, there's the canceling out of factors, finding, you know, these different things. So we just have to make sure we have all that stuff together. And so just kind of remember what we need to do. So, you know, whenever we're adding fractions, whenever we're subtracting fractions, you know, we need to make sure that we have a common denominator. Now, the idea behind common denominator is, you know, we've done it before where we can figure out what we multiply both fractions by in order to create common denominator. But what we want to look at instead is we want to make identical factors. So if we get things in terms of their factors, we know what they're missing and what we need to include with them. So for example, if I write this first fraction again with factors, this would be 2 over 3 times 5, and then plus 3 over 5 times 5. Now this is an example that I showed you in your previous notes, but the idea is that we want to get these denominators to have exactly the same factors. And so we have a factor of 3, we have a factor of 5 in the first fraction, and then two factors of 5 in the second. So if we're trying to get the total number of factors to be the same, you know, obviously we can say, okay, this one over here needs a factor of 3, because the one on the left this has a factor of 3. So they both need to have the factor of 3. Now in this case, they both need to have two factors of 5. So I need to add another or multiply another factor of 5 to that first fraction. Now if we remember what we do with fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top. So we're going to bring those up and we're going to multiply those two as well. And so the idea that we're going with is still the same, but you know it's going to be important that we look at things in terms of their factors instead. And so this would be 10 over 3 times 5 times 5 plus 9 over 5. Well, we can start it in the same way, 3 times 5 times 5. So the idea behind that is that we're looking at those, we're adding them together, and then we get 19 over 3 times 5 times 5. Now, from here, what we want to do is instead of just um, making that, you know, multiplying that out, if we're just kind of looking at it, now what we can do is we can factor this 19 to see if there was any factors that we could cancel out. And that's what we're going to be doing as we go through this. So let's look at an example of this. And so we, before we look at that example, let's kind of look at what our process is for doing this. So we have basically six steps that we're going to go through for adding and subtracting rational expressions. The first one is we're going to factor the denominator if possible. So we're going to write out all those, fa those factors if we can. If not, then that's fine. We can do some other things there. Um, the idea then with number two is that we're going to identify the least common denominator. So we're going to decide what that denominator needs to be. And in some cases, it might be multiplying other factors. Um, and we'll look at some examples as we go forward. And then we're going to multiply each fraction by the missing pieces. So as I spoke as we kind of mentioned in the previous slide, we want to have those factors to be identical, but we also need to make sure that we do that with the numerator and the denominator. The fourth thing is once we do that, we can use our distributive property. So if there's any kind of factoring um, that we did or any kind of factors that we multiplied, we need to make sure that we can put them in a position where we can add them together. And we're going to need to use the distributive property. Um, step five would be now to add the two numerators together. So once we get the common denominators, once we get them in their simplest form, then we can start to combine them. And then we bring that together and we simplify it again. So this is going to be a few step process and we're going to look at a few examples so that we can go through it together. So this was the example that I wanted you to at least look at. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need a common denominator. 
And the idea behind this is we have to look at these in terms of factors. And so since we have this x plus 3 and this x minus 2 in the denominator, we're going to treat these as one piece because these are not factors just by themselves, the individual pieces. It's all together. And so the idea is that we have to kind of decide what our common denominator is. Now, with that being said, we have to look at things in terms of their factors. And so what I can say is that if I multiply over here an x plus 3, then that also has a factor of x plus 3. And so, you know, sometimes when we're making common denominators, it's easiest just to multiply the denominators by each other. And if I multiply over here, I have a same situation in which I get x minus 2. Now, when I look at these, if I have x minus 2 times x plus 3 in both of those denominators, now those are common denominators. So even though they're binomials, they are both factors, and they both have identical factors. So instead of just looking at it in terms of numbers, we have to look at them as what are some of the binomials that we can have. Now from that, what we have to do is whatever we do to the bottom, we have to make sure that we do to the top. So we would multiply both of these by x minus 2. Now these are going to be in parentheses. Now this is going to be the toughest spot here. So if we're looking at our process, we've already kind of gone, th gone through the first three steps. And basically we've done that by just kind of working with the fraction as we know them. Now the second thing that we're going to do kind of is kind of digesting these steps is that now we need to FOIL the numerator. And so now we have to take each one of these pieces and we're going to have x minus 3 times x plus 1 and then we're going to have 2x minus 5 times x plus 3. And again we keep that denominator. Now these two things are being added together so we're kind of adding polynomials together. So if we go ahead and FOIL these we get x squared minus 2x minus 3 plus 2x squared plus 1x minus 15. Now I simplified that process so if you needed to write that out and actually FOIL that you're more than welcome to so you just need to make sure that you FOIL and you kind of do all your distributing and everything like that. Now the idea behind this is now that we have common denominators, we don't really have to worry about the denominators as of right now. And so what we can do here is that we can go ahead and now we can simplify our like terms. This is not subtraction, so we don't have to worry about doing any of that. So let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So we have 3x squared, then we have minus 1x, and then we're going to have minus 18. And now that I have this simplified, now I can put this over my common denominator. Now I could take this one step further if I needed to and say 3x squared minus 1x minus 18 and actually FOIL out that denominator which would give me x squared plus 1x minus 6. Now there's nothing that I can cancel, so don't try to cancel this and this and this and this and this and this. That's not going to work. That's not how we go about canceling things. I remember I told you the other day, you can't cancel terms, but you can only cancel factors. Now if I needed to, what I could go through here and do is a little bit more on the complicated side, but this is something that we also need to look at. So now we're going to take this 3x squared minus 1x minus 18, and we're going to put that through that a times c factoring method. And so from that, we're going to get 3 times 18, which is 54. Now the idea behind that is that c is negative, so that would technically be a negative 54. Now from that what we can do is we could start listing out the factors of 54, but what we're going to find out is that there are no two factors of 54 that would combine to give us um, negative 1 in the middle. The only two closest factors to give us 54 would be 6 times 9 and those are too far apart. Um, and so the idea here is that this cannot be simplified any further. And so when we go back up to it, this is going to be our final answer here of 3x squared minus 1x minus 18 
divided by x squared plus 1x minus 6. So I know that this is a long process of going through some of these things, but we're just going to be working through the skills that we've already kind of had in place and trying to make sure that we can simplify when we don't actually have numbers to simplify. And that's where this kind of algebra comes into place is we have to rely on the skills that we have and the understanding that we have rather than just knowing what to do because there's numbers there. All right, so let's keep moving with this. And so the idea is that we need to find a common denominator. And so we need to factor in order to find this common denominator. So realistically, what I'm doing is I'm just focused on the numer or the denominators. You know, at this point, you know, I'm a firm believer of just looking at just the denominators by themselves first. I don't need to worry about anything else. So I need to find factor pairs of 2 that combine to give me negative 3. So that would give me x minus 1 times x minus 2 because they're both negative. It's positive at the end, but it's negative in the middle. Now if I factor 2x minus 4, I can bring out a factor of 2, and then I have x minus 2. Now when I look at these denominators, notice what factors they have, what factors they don't have. They both already have a factor of x minus 2, so that's already shared. We don't have to worry about having those. But if we notice, this one over here doesn't have a factor of 2. So I need to multiply this by 2. Now they both have a factor of 2, and they both have a factor of x minus 2. What's the only factor that they don't share? Well, it's the x minus 1. So let's go ahead and multiply that in, x minus 1. Now they both have and they share all three of the same factors. And so from that, that is my common denominator. So my common denominator, I'll label CD, is 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. And so that's the common denominator that I'll be working with. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and start moving towards... my numerators. And so the idea behind that is I need to look at what that numerator is and kind of what I comp what I added to it. And so here I multiplied on the left side. I multiplied this by 2. That was the only factor that I included in there. So I need to take that up to the top. So 2 times 5x minus 1. Now on the other side, I added a factor, or I didn't necessarily add it, but I multiplied a factor of x minus 1. So that's plus 3 times x minus 1. So now that I have this, then I can go ahead and I can start multiplying this or factoring this through. And so here, when I factor, or I, not necessarily factor, but when I FOIL this, I get 10x minus 2 plus 3x minus 3. And then I can go ahead and combine those together. So I get 10x plus 3x, which gives me 13x. And then minus 5 as a total. Now that there are no common factors between 13 and 5, so I know that I'm pretty much done there. And so now that's where I bring in my common denominator now. So now that I notice that there's nothing that I can do with this numerator, now I can take that numerator and basically put it with my denominator. And so I have 2 times x minus 1, times x minus 2. And there is my simplified fraction. So the idea behind this is we're just kind of moving through and we're working with all these different factors and kind of making sure that they're all sharing the same factors in the denominator. All right, so let's look at another example here. So we're still going through the same process. Now the only thing that we're doing differently is that now we're working with subtraction. So we just have to remember what we do with subtraction when we get to that. And so now the first step that I'm going to take is I'm going to factor my denominators. And so I'm going to take each one of these individually, and I'm going to go ahead and factor them. And so the first thing that I'm going to start with is I'm just going to say, okay, let's work with that. And then let's work with just this one here. And so now that I have the situation set up, then I can say, okay, factor pairs of 3. That combine to give me negative 2. And so that will give me x minus 3, x plus 1. So the idea of the factor pairs there are 3 and 1. We have a negative 3, and then we have a positive 1. 
Okay, so now that I move on to my next one here, so now I have x squared minus x minus 6. So I'm looking at factor pairs of 6 that are different from each other that combine to give me negative 1. And so the only two factors of 6, or the only factors of 6 that are one value apart are x minus 3 and x plus 2. So negative 3 times positive 2 gives me the negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 gives me the negative 1x. And so now what I have here is if we notice we have our, in a sense, we have our two denominators. And so now we have to look at what are the factors that they share, what are the factors that they don't share. And so when I look at this, we both have already an x minus 3, so that's good. They don't share an x plus 1, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply in an x plus 1. Now when I do that, what would be a good practice is to also multiply up here by x plus 1, because whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So now they both share a factor of x plus 1. The only thing that they don't share is that factor of x plus 2. So I can go ahead and I can multiply that in, x plus 2, and then I'm going to do it up here too as well, x plus 2. And so now that I have all my factors, my common denominator, I'll just kind of write it over here, is x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. So those are the three factors that make up my denominator. And now I can continue on with the way that I was doing this here. And so now I have my factors that I multiplied into my numerator with what was already there. So I have x plus 2 times 5x plus 1 minus 5x minus 3 in parentheses and x plus 1. Now the biggest thing is you need to make sure that you keep those original numerators in parentheses so that we can multiply those with the other factors that we kind of multiplied in to kind of make our equivalent fractions. And so now I can go ahead and I can FOIL these. So I get x times 5x is 5x squared, x times 1 and then 2 times 5x would give us plus 11x and then plus 2 and then minus, and then I'm going to keep this in parentheses. Now remember, because of the fact that I'm subtracting, and I'm going to have to distribute that subtraction. So that's going to give me 5x to the second, and then that's going to give me 5 plus 2x, and then minus 3. And so now I'm going to go ahead and distribute that subtraction, and I get 5x squared plus 11x plus 2 minus 5x squared minus 2x, and then plus 3. So now I can go ahead and go with my next step here, why I'm just going to combine like terms. And so that, find, that gives me, this cancels this, and that gives me 9x plus 5. Now there are no common factors between 9x and 5, so I don't have to worry about factoring that, because the idea is that we're going to factor it, we're going to do some manipulations with it, and then we're going to factor stuff back. So it is going to be a little bit of work. Um, and so from that now, we can kind of multiply in my common denominator, which ended up being x plus 2 times x minus 3, and then x plus 1. Now the idea behind this too is I can still look for my exclusions. would be x cannot equal negative 2, positive 3, or negative 1. So there we go. So those are just our kind of our normal process. So we're just going through finding common denominator and then simplifying as necessary. Okay, so let's look at one more example here just to kind of go through. So if you can get the idea of what we're doing here, that's fine. But now we're going to go ahead and look at one more. So again, we're going to kind of ignore the numerators there and only focus on the denominators. And so here I have x squared minus x. So always look for greatest common factor first, which the greatest common factor is x. Multiply that by x minus 1 because that's what's left over. And then I have on the other side x. Now that doesn't need to be factored because it's kind of already factored. And so let's kind of fill in the missing pieces. They both have a factor of x 
but they both need to share a factor of x minus 1. And so whatever I do to the bottom, I also need to do to the top fraction. And so the idea is that the first one gets left alone because it already had everything that it needed. It's just the second fraction needed a, a little bit more. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can set up our kind of our foiling here. So now we can go back to focusing on our numerator. So our common denominator that we have is x times x minus 1. We'll save that for a little bit later. And so now we have 1 minus 1 times x minus 1. So that would be the numerator after we kind of um, multiply those extra factors that we needed to incorporate. All right, so that now we're going to go ahead and we're going to FOIL. And we can distribute if we want to. It doesn't really make a difference here because there's not too much going on. But just remember, I'm going to distribute this negative 1. And so that would give me 1 minus 1x plus 1. And so now what I would go ahead and do is then I would see this and I would say, okay, well, now I can combine my like terms. My like terms are negative 1x plus 2. Now, the reason that I wrote it this way is because, remember, we're using standard form of polynomials, so we always want to have things from highest to lowest degree. And then we're going to divide that by our common denominator, which is x times x minus 1. Now, there's nothing that we can cancel here. There's nothing that we can factor because there really isn't anything left over. Um, everything is kind of already there. Um, there's no common factor between negative 1x and positive 2. So there's really nothing that we can do here, and this is going to be it. So the idea of what we're trying to find is, one, we're trying to find our common denominator, and then we're trying to make the denominator share the same factors. So you need to either multiply in what we have, what we don't have, um, and make sure that they are the same. So that's going to do it for this particular uh, video here. And the next one, we're going to start focusing on multiplication and division, which tends to be a little bit easier.